Hello and welcome everyone. This is our flash note series. In this series of lectures, we will discuss briefly on very high yield anatomical concept with their proper clinical correlations. This is flash note 2. In this particular flash note, we will discuss briefly on neural tube defect. Before starting our proper topic, we need to have a strong foundation on how neural tube is actually being developed. So during the phase of gastrulation, when the three germ layers are established, the notochor is formed along with everything. This with the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. The notochord induces the formation or differentiation of ectoderm into neuroectoderm. So, the event, the first initiating event is that the ectoderm gets differentiated into neuroectoderm. This is under the action of the gene, particular gene known as the sonic hedgehog gene. This sonic hedgehog gene produces the protein known as sonic hedgehog protein, which induces a differentiation of this ectoderm into neuroectoderm. So, a neural plate gets formed. Now, this neuroectoderm it forms neural plate and neural plate eventually forms neural tube and neural crest cell so on our left we can see how this neural plate is differentiating into neural tube and neural crest cell so the main principle is that this neural plate which is a flat plate just like a normal plate has two boundaries or two limitations these are the neural plate borders and from these two extreme borders of the neural plate they start overgrowing just like this they start overgrowing on their lateral borders and from their lateral borders they start growing towards each other that's why this simple plate now gets converged into a group so a neural tube is established eventually so the sequence of event is that at first simple ectoderm gets differentiated into neuroectoderm under the influence of this gene sonic hedgehog gene and and this sonic hedgehog gene is produced by notochord now this neuroectoderm gets folded within itself to form neural fold and finally a neural groove is formed the outermost lateralmost and outermost cells of this neural groove these are the neural crest cells we have our separate lecture on the adult derivatives of neural crest cells so in this particular series we will only understand how the neural tube and neural crest cells are differentiated this notochord it has a adult derivative of nucleus pulposus of intervertebral disc in adult now if these lateral walls of the neural tube fails to fuse so in the this is the dorsal view of the imre it is just like that we are seeing the uh, fetal we are seeing the imre from its towards its backside so these there these are the two approximation of the lateral walls of the neural tube so the proper tube has not yet been established so they actually meet with each other at this cervical region now from this cervical region they start zipping up along the rostral direction and along the 
caudal direction. And finally, there are only two pores will be established. This one is the cranial neuropore and this caudal mass is the caudal neuropore. And finally, they also fuse with each other and the day is particularly important for the fusion or closure of this neural tube. So, this cranial neural tube, they actually close at the 25th day and just 3 day after closure of this cranial neuropore, this caudal neuropore also closes that is at the 28th day. Now, if these normal events, they fail to occur, then the defect which we will be seeing is the neural tube defect. Now, for example, if we are not being able to close these two lateral walls, then the open, the neural tube remains open and the open neural tube actually they communicate with the spinal with the amniotic cavity so here at the uh, here at the uh, center of the neural tube we have developing spinal cord and outside here is amniotic cavity so the problem is that the neural tube which is actually left open, they communicate with this amniotic cavity. So, the serum alpha phytoprotein and acetylcholine sterase in the maternal cell serum, it gets elevated. That's why these two proteins can be used as a marker to establish the diagnosis whether there is elevation whether there is neural tube defect or not but the serum alpha protein it gets elevated even in our ventral wall defect just like in the omphalocele and gastroschisis that's why alpha protein is not that that much reliable contained but Acetylcholine sterase is increased only when the neural tube is open. That's why if we have elevation of both alpha phytoprotein as well as acetylcholine sterase, then this is diagnostic for neural tube defect. So, the problem can be at the caudal most end or at the rostral end so if the rostral end of the neural pore they fail to fuse then the result will be anencephaly in anencephaly we have the complete absence of prosencephalon that is complete absence of forebrain and calvarium remains open so the clinical finding will be the face or uh, sorry the head of the fetus will be like frog like appearance with open spinal canal the spinal canal can be seen open there will be maternal hydroamnius the concept is that when there is no formation of brain then there would be absence of swallowing center in the brain and the source of amniotic fluid in the fetus is the fetal urine itself. So the source of amniotic fluid is the fetus urine itself and the fetus is continuously producing amniotic fluid but it's not able to drink that amniotic fluid and excrete. That's why there will be maternal hydroamnios. That was about rostral neural pore failure. So now, if there is caudal neural pore failure to fuse, then the result is spina bifida. So before understanding spina bifida, we need to have a background knowledge on 
the normal formation, normal uh, arrangement of the vertebra and the spinal cord. So, here in the figure, we can see spinal cord with its leptomeninges simply includes pia mater and arachnoid mater and outermost dura mater. So, there are spinal cord and meninges along and they are enclosed in this vertebral arch. So, the problem is that if there is failure of fusion of this vertebral arch, then this arch gets bifida. So, it has been termed as spina bifida. So, let's enter into our general spina bifida. So, the first scenario is spina bifida occluta. In spina bifida occluta, the problem is that there is failure of fusion between these two vertebral arches. And clinically, it will appear like a dimple or tuff of here at the level of vertebral damage. Next is meningocele. In meningocele, the meninges layer, only the meninges layer protrudes. So, we can see the difference between these two. In spina bifida occluta, there is no any protrusion of the meninges layer and everything that's a dura mater is intact but in this the meningeal layer is protruding outward the third is meningomyelocil in meningomyelocil both the meningeal layer as well as myelo means brain the neural tissue both are protruding outward so to summarize, spina bifida occluta is that condition of because of failure or failure on closure of posterior vertebral arch and it will present like a dimple or tuff of here in the skin overlying the level of bony defect. In meningocele, it will present like a cystic mass containing the meninges and the herniated lumbosacral sac. It actually contains CSF and meninges that will eventually form a lumbosacral cyst. In meningomyelocele, spina bifida with a cystic mass containing meninges and spinal cord. So the answer is within its name. This is simple spina bifida occluta. This is meningocele and this is meningomyelocele. One of the high yield point is that the meningomyelocele is often associated with KRE type 2 type of abnormality. We will discuss what a KRE type 1 or type 2, type 3, type 4 actually mean. But we have to keep in mind that meningomyelocele is generally associated with type 2, KRE type 2 abnormality. All right, so the flash quiz. So let's identify the following abnormalities. We can pause the video and answer yourself. So the first one is spina bifida occluta, second one meningocele, third one meningomyelocele. We can all see from their characteristic features. So the present of top of ear, intact dura mater, spina bifida occluta and uh, presence of uh, cystic dilation with, and with the herniation of this meninges layer meningocele cystic dilation with the herniation of both meninges as well as neural tissue meningo meningomyelocele all right next flask is what two proteins can be measured in maternal serum as the surrogate of neural tube defect so Elevated alpha fetoprotein and acetylcholine sterase. Next question. Here, a primi gravida woman who was not able to have proper prenatal care gave birth to a baby with a small tough of ear. 
on his back. USG demonstrates underlying defect in the dural sac. With, with which particular nutrient supplementation could this presentation have been prevented? Alright, so from this uh, simple hint, we can understand that this baby is having spina bifida occluta. So, spina bifida occluta is the result of failure of fusion on the caudal neural pore. That's why, in order to close the neural pore, if the maternal supplementation was of say for it 400 microgram once a day then of course this presentation could have been prevented next question which of the following would have been seen in an adult which deficient in the same nutrient so the answer is hypersegmented neutrophils because absence of folate in the adult gives rise to megaloblastic anemia and megaloblastic anemia presents as the hypersegmented neutrophils with this we conclude our flash note stay tuned thank you